Hi, I'm Marilyn McDermott, and welcome to another segment of In the Green, and I'm here with guests. Jess Elson. Dolores McCarthy. And we're going to be talking uh, a bit about the uh, hopefully proposed dog park one day and the idea of this. And uh, I'm going to let you go first. Usually it's ladies first, but we'll be green and we'll let this gentleman go <laughs> first. Um, Jess, tell us a little bit about uh, your situation. We were in the park. We did talk to you. Uh, at some point, but tell us more. Uh, okay, well, I basically um, got the idea one day that my dog needs more exercise than I can give him by running him around my house and walking him up and down the street, and I found that there was no place around that I could take him, let him off leash, to exercise, to play, to socialize with other dogs, with other people, in a fairly safe and friendly environment. So I got together with a few other people and we found a place to go where we could block off the entrances uh, so the dogs could not get out or run onto the streets. And we decided that this was a great idea. We all had fun, we were socializing, we were meeting new people. The dogs socialized with each other, socialized with people. And it became a, an every week experience. And then we decided that this would be great if we could do it at night, on the other, you know, days, weekends whenever we wanted to, but in Farmington Hills, there's no place to take our dogs. Uh, you can't take it into a city park off leash or even into a city park on leash. The uh, city of Farmington does not allow dogs in the parks on leash or off leash. So we need a park of our own, and that's one reason we decided that we need to start a action uh, showing the city that there is a need and a want for something like this. Yeah, there, this is, I understand this has worked quite well in other places. West Bloomfield is trying to get one going. Um, our friend was uh, telling us that the other day. Um, that's good. That, that's really important. Uh, there is not much of an area designated just for this at all. Where, where else is this going on at? I mean, are there other parks? or? Well, when I moved here 22 years ago, mm -hmm. no one bothered us in Shiawassee Park in Farmington, and there were a group of people who would bring their dogs and they would play in the center of Shiawassee, mm -hmm. and then something horrible happened. We started seeing police cars come in. Some kind of a law was passed where we could not have the dogs off the leash. And it was very, very sad because, uh, believe it or not, these dogs got to know each other. Dogs are so social animals, and they do like to socialize with each other. And when we were, you know, as Jesse says, that you know we had to, to keep the dogs on the leash all the time, I have a friend that has two whippets, and she's going through a very difficult time because these dogs have to run. And this poor woman like myself, well, she's not as old as I am, but she's getting there, senior. <laughs> I am a senior, and there are seniors who love their dogs, and they like to socialize with their dogs. Now, she has nowhere to let these dogs just run. And it's very sad because up until maybe, what was it, about a year ago, they got really tough on us. And I'm always looking for police cars here and there, so I decided that I'm not <laughs> going to go against the law anymore. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that, but that is a very good idea. Um, my mother being from, my, both my parents were, but my mother telling me in Europe, in England, uh, there are doggy parks everywhere. This is quite the thing, and designated areas that animals are allowed to go and and right. Rome, and I understand these proposed dog parks, the one that you would like to uh, decide to get going in the area, you, there would be uh, stations for um, scoopers. <laughs> right. How do you do that? I mean, uh, that's one of the concerns, not a big one, not a major one. But well, the, the, uh, what my proposal, our proposal would be is that the uh, city would help us uh, maintain the parks with uh, you know, basically sanitation, a, a place for us to dispose of poop, excuse the expression, in a uh, sanitary manner 
Uh, most of the people that come to the park that we go to now or our makeshift park bring their own plastic bags. They bring, you know, uh, materials to clean up their dogs, uh, after their dogs. And then we take the, the cleanup home right now. We would like a proposed park to have a uh, area that we could dispense of this uh, material in a sanitary way. We'd like them to help us furnish it with uh, scoopers and with bags and with uh, uh, water so that the dogs could be you know, kept cool on hot days. Mm -hmm. If we could, we'd like shade. If we could, we'd like park benches. If we could, we'd like tables. There's a lot of things that we would like, but right now we just want a place that we can take our dogs and feel comfortable that we're not intruding on anybody's private property or anybody's personal space uh, where you won't get into uh, a situation where we're going to get yelled at by people that are jogging or riding bicycles or skateboarding or doing any of the things that they like to do in the city of Farmington Hills. But we can't enjoy the city of Farmington Hills Parks and Recreation Department because of our dogs. And this is why we need uh, this, this to change and we need it to change soon. There's, right now we've got a petition drive going. We probably have close to 500 to 1,000 signatures uh, of people that would like to see a dog park in Farmington Hills. Uh, in West Bloomfield, there's a petition drive and they're gonna be getting their dog park probably within six months. So we need, uh, we need to follow West Bloomfield or to lead other communities. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past 10 years, I think the amount of dog parks in the United States has grown from 50 to almost 5,000. And it just shows that people like to socialize with their pets. They like to be in an environment where they feel safe and comfortable running their dogs loose, and the dog can enjoy themselves. Uh, and dogs don't feel threatened in an environment where there's a lot of other animals running, and they don't have to protect property. It's a, it's a good, right. healthy environment. Yeah, that, that's a, a good thing. I have a friend in New York City, and in New York City they have a dog park. And I think of the price of land there. And here in Farmington Hills, we have so much available land. We really do. And I have another sister that lives in uh, Massapequa, New York. She has a dog park. I'm getting jealous. <laughs> All these people with dog parks. <laughs> here I live in a place like Farmington Hills, which has, you know, it's so beautiful and so much land and everything. We just can't have a little piece for our doggies. Well, the, the idea is to let people know and that's that we one want of the, yeah, the, one of the things and one of the reasons why we're here is to uh, let the public know that this is a need and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that agree with, with this uh, proposal and it be. Now, how you have to get names on the ballot to start with. You have to petition names, so well, they have to know that they can. The, uh, I've talked with the city council here in Farmington Hills mm -hmm. and they told me that we need to have a proposal, um, some way of funding the initial dog park, some way of funding the maintenance of the dog park, a proposed area to put the dog park, and there's several areas uh, that we're considering. We just have to find out if they are available. There's, uh, they want to know how we can plan for parking and plan for other things. and. Uh, the city of Farmington Hills has several parks that are available that have space already mm -hmm. there. We just need help in putting up the fencing and uh, maintaining the uh, surrounding environments and, uh, you know, grass cutting would be nice. Um, so there are areas that we're considering uh, that will be in a proposal. The signatures were basically, I was told we didn't need any signatures, but when you have a need or a want or a desire, it's nice to have uh, reinforcement of that. It's not just a dream that I have or right. that the Dolores right. has. Yes. It's, uh, right now we know there's at least um, probably a thousand people that want to do the same thing. So we don't need just you know one acre. We probably could use two to three acres of land fenced in uh, so that we could, you know, uh, last Sunday at this makeshift dog park, we had over 60 dogs there and they were all well behaved and uh, we just, you know, yeah. enjoy that. We want to um, let people know the, with the phone number, uh, and they're you're gonna they're gonna put that on the screen, or if okay. they haven't already. What's your, the phone number? They, they can, can contact, contact me at uh, two four eight five five three nine four seven eight. Uh, you can leave messages if I don't answer the phone, or leave a message with my secretary, and she'll be more than happy to pass it on to me. If they want to contact me, if they want to sign the petitions for dog parks in Farmington Hills. We'd be more than happy to hear from them. Very good. 
very good cause. And if anyone wants to contact me, I'm at 248-661-0345. And I'm getting petitions, too. And I'm surprised at uh, how many people say, oh, a dog park, sure, I'll sign that. I'm getting lots of signatures and more to come. Well, yeah, like, you know, we had said before, um, uh, animals, uh, pets, dogs are more than just a, a pet usually for most people. They are their best friend. Um, again, we, were, we had met, uh, was it Josh? Right. Yeah, oh, you're, Josh. you're yes. yeah, <laughs> he's sweetie. And uh, how, in that instance, how um, the public's idea of animals, they aren't always allowed or welcomed in establishment, even when they're the paws puppies. All right. We, uh, <coughs> uh, I, I, again, so that people know I'm a uh, foster parent for Paws with a Cause, and I raise dogs 14 to 16 months uh, that are used in training, or used in the, uh, for people that have disabilities. Mm -hmm. And these dogs are socialized in many different environments, and a lot of these environments, uh, when I take them in, we're not always welcome. We've had people ask us to leave because the dog is not safe, he's not clean, he's not healthy, he's all the things that you know would make you want to take a dog away. And these away. are well-trained dogs. You were telling me you uh, help train police dogs. You've done other training. Well, many years ago, I trained dogs mm -hmm. for the uh, military. Uh, that was when the Vietnam War was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm a trainer, uh, volunteer trainer for the Michigan Humane Society. Yes with puppies and uh, we have a manners for life class which are for dogs that don't have any training and all of a sudden they're nine and ten months old and don't know how to behave Whoa. with people. <laughs> <laughs> so dogs yeah. can be trained. Yeah, at uh, any time. So just so people know that it's never too late then? Never too late. To uh, teach an old dog <laughs> new Old tricks. dog new tricks? Well, we can <laughs> teach them some tricks. Yeah. Uh, as long as they give us an opportunity to show them how to do it. We basically like to train people first and then the dog second. <laughs> But our paws dogs, okay. uh, our paws yeah. dogs definitely have to have a uh, environment where uh, we teach the dog how to fetch, um, and most of fetching is only done in a few feet. But it's nice that they can stretch their legs, they can build their uh, right. And you were saying one of the most wonderful things is that they help people in the wheelchairs. These are um, I came across a lady in Myers that like that. Um, I'm being uh, told to that we have a uh, a clip of the other day when we were in the, the uh, beautiful park, Heritage Park, so that will be coming on quite shortly. On site in the green, we're here today in Heritage Park in uh, this, I believe this is Farmington, uh, Farmington Hills, yes, that we're in. Um, we're here today with our guests, Dolores, <laughs> what, Dolores McCarthy. And Jess Elson. And Josh. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> um, we're here to discuss the possibility and the probability of a doggy park. Uh, you would think that this is something normal in your parks and rec, but a lot of times this is banned for various parks, and Farmington Hills is no exception uh, to the rules. So uh, we want to talk a little bit today uh, we're going to ask our guests to tell us about um, the situation and what they're proposing for the future. Okay, you first, ladies first. Okay, uh, my feelings are that the dog park will help to safely contain dogs that are normally off-leash in the community. In this way, the dog park will help to minimize accidents and runaways and definitely helps control uncollected dog litter because the runs are supplied with proper scoopers and owners in the run are conscientious about picking up after their dog. Dog owners who use the park would help to maintain it and would help educate other dog owners about vaccinations and picking up the poop. In short, the dog park benefits all community members, especially those that do not own dogs. Well, Margaret. That was very good, and I'd like to add, uh, I'm sorry, Dolores, uh, I'd like to add a uh, brief uh, summary of that. We feel that a dog park in Farmington Hills would give the dogs that normally have no place to exercise a safe and uh, 
quality place to exercise. This would keep the dogs from chasing people running down the street or riding their bicycles or skateboarding or rollerblading past their homes. Um, this would also give us an environment where we could socialize with each other, other dog owners, and the dogs get used to people mingling around together. They don't chase, they don't fight. And it's a quality environment for not only the dogs but the uh, dog owners in the community where we don't have a place to take our dogs now because of the no dog in the park attitude of Farmington Hills. Thank you. Um, what we need to do is to see where we're going to go in the future uh, with this. Is there a proposal right now before the board of Farmington Hills yet, um, Jeff? Right now I'm in the uh, process with Dolores and a few other people, Margaret, uh, we're pr making up a proposal. We're using a very similar proposal in the West Bloomfield area. Uh, this would show the council that there is a need, the way we could establish it, the way we could fund it. Um, and all I need to do now is come up with property that is available. And since there are so many parks in Farmington Hills that have open area that is not being used at the present time, it uh, shouldn't cost too much money to establish a park in a reasonable amount of time. Now, there are a lot of parks in other communities. West Bloomfield has a park. Um, and did you want to come and talk about it? We have a guest over here. Does she want to be on camera? <laughs> come on over here and tell us about it. And tell us your name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pat Solomon from West Bloomfield. We have a committee in West Bloomfield working with Parks and Recreation on the implementation of a dog park and our proposal is before them. We're getting it incorporated into the master plan. And we am told and are hopeful that we will have one up and running in West Bloomfield and Off Leash Dog Park in the spring of 2002. Very good. Um, this is pretty common in other areas that are less restrictive um, about this sort of situation. I know in Europe it's commonplace for animals to go in and out the stores and to be uh, put elevated into a higher esteem. We're talking about this young animal here. Tell us a little bit, Jess, about your PAWS program, about the dog, the situation where these types of dogs have to be with the people. They cannot be removed. Okay, this is Josh. He's 14 months old. He's a Paws with a Cause puppy. Uh, I'm a foster parent for Paws. We basically get the dogs at approximately seven weeks old, keep them till they're 14 to 16 months, and we train them, socialize them, take them to any environment where a person with disabilities might have the opportunity to go. Uh, in this country right now with the American Disabilities Act, that means they can go anywhere, including parks, airplanes, restaurants, hotels, uh, any place that the public's allowed, so are the dogs. And uh, Josh has to learn how to be a proper person or dog in the environment where his person has to be. So in order to train a dog in an environment with a park situation, they need to be allowed in parks. And as far as the off-leash part of it, we need to train these dogs and exercise them so that they can pull wheelchairs and help people get off the ground if they happen to fall. And there's no way to really build up a dog's stamina or strength. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of strength. Yeah. He's still not done with training. He's, he still has another year to finish his training. But um, the only way to really get their lungs and their hearts done are to uh, have a place where they can run and exercise freely without environment, with other animals that aren't really uh, safe to be around. Okay, so what we're looking at, um, that we want the, the, you want the community to stand behind this situation. Uh, would there be that would have to be voted on? How would the uh, people in the community, how may they help in this cause? Right now, we're taking up a uh, petition drive. We have a petition drive started. There's approximately, we have approximately 500 signatures right now, and we plan on collecting more over the next couple weeks. We're going to present that along with the proposal to the city council and tell them that there is an interest, there is a need, and there is a, a very big concern with dog owners and people that don't own dogs to have a park so that people can exercise and play with their dogs in a safe environment. And may I say that uh, <clears throat> I've been surprised at how many people I've asked signatures, you know, for the uh, 
petition and uh, they seem to be very anxious to have a dog park and some of them don't have dogs and uh, they still feel positive about it. Hi, we are now at the Pep Cemetery in Heritage Park. We are with our guest Dolores and Jesse. Jesse. I'm getting to know their names and of course John. Mike. Um, this and all the land that was uh, donated by the Spicer family to the city of Farmington Hills to make the Heritage Park. With it came their um, pet cemetery that they uh, buried their beloved pet dogs and they have different animals. Um, this is a beautiful, uh, in, in memory of Lally, it says a beautiful, lovable calling, 1930 to 1943. Ah, Lally, did I worship God as truly as you worshipped me, or follow where my master trod with your hum humility? Did I sit fondly at his feet as you, dear Lally, sat at mine, and watch him with a love as sweet my life would be divine? I can't re read that last part grow divine I believe it was um, that's been there a long time there's another one tiny and Heather and Jess do you have any comments about the pet cemetery here yes I think that uh, the Spicers uh, with the feeling they must have had for their animals that developed this pet cemetery showed that they would uh, be more than happy if they were still around or still influential to the City Council would definitely push them to have a dog park in this area I'm sure that they had uh, love and affection. Their dogs ran free in this area before, uh, and it's now a time to do it again. So we definitely need to establish a dog park. Farmington Hills needs to establish it, whether it's in Heritage Park or Pioneer Park or some other park around. We need to do it now. Real good, Jess. I want to um, just talk to Josh here. This is who we're fighting for. These dogs can't speak for themselves. They have rights. This is animal rights. Uh, they need to be treated as fair, equal citizens. Uh, they are viable and need to be respected. And they have a place in our parks. Thank you. Um, hope you enjoyed uh, the clip. Uh, we're back with uh, Jess and Dolores. Dolores. I'll get your names That's by the end okay. of it. We went over them before. We need name tags. That's right. Uh, I understand, Jess, in the break. You're running for uh, city council. I'm getting petitions. Okay, signed city and council. we'll have you back again to talk about that subject. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have uh, s uh, some more time to wrap up and to go over anything else you'd like to talk about. Um, is there anything that you would want to discuss? We've got six minutes, I'm being told. <laughs> Dolores? I think I've said everything yeah. that I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing I'd like to say is that uh, people that are interested in uh, dog parks uh, or don't know anything about off-leash dog parks, I would like to know, I uh, would like them to know that they can contact me and I'll give them the information that I have. Uh, if I don't have the answers, I'll get it for them. Or they can go online. Um, Okay. under dog parks and there, I think there's 5,200 sites available. Mm. So if there's any questions, I'm sure they'll be able to find the answers. Uh, right now, as far as I know, the biggest dog park is either in Washington State or in California. Uh, they have dog parks on the ocean. So there's quite a need for them, there's quite a desire for them. And the socialization of dogs and people together is a major importance now. Uh, the Pet industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, and more and more people are finding that pets have reasons not just to be an animal running around the house or guarding their dog or their house. Uh, they're not just guard dogs anymore or somebody to make an alarm if there's somebody outside. Yeah, they're part of the family. I know uh, right now I just have attack cats. <laughs> no, I have ca <laughs> cats but uh, because I'm not home much, but I will get doggies. Uh, one day when my children are grown because I saw the 10-year-old these pets and